Hi, I'm Jose Abel, and uh, I'm proud to present to you guys the new load pattern that implements domain reduction method DRM analysis in open seas. And as you can see here in my background or in my screen share, there's a new load pattern in open seas. The documentation is not yet in the principal documentation web pages, but you can find it if you take a look at the RST file. There's a link here uh, that I'll put in the description that'll get updated to the official documentation once that's ready. So the, if you don't know what uh, DRM is, Domain Reduction Method is a fancy way of inputting earthquake motions into a continuum-based finite element model of a site or a structure and a site for doing SSI analysis, soil structure interaction analysis. So I've implemented this uh, in Open Seas. It's been there for a, quite a while. I've been doing extensive testing and uh, interfacing with some other tools, and I'm finally at a point where I think uh, I can share it with the world uh, and so you guys can try it out. So uh, here's the documentation for the HD, H5 DRM load pattern, and it's called H5 DRM because the data format it takes in to produce the DRM, the seismic motions, is the H5 DRM format that is based on uh, HDF5. So it, that's just a fancy way of just uh, saying what the data format it's expecting. In order to prepare these data sets, it's quite complex and you, you have to use usually specialized, uh, specialized software to do it. So the documentation is here. I'm not gonna go too much into it, but I just wanna show you what, uh, what one case looks like. Uh, here the, the, I discuss a lot about the, the transformation process that happens. So you have a, a set of, your data set comes as a set of points that need to get matched into the FEM model and that matching occurs via a transformation and this is just to illustrate what the transformation looks like. So I'm going to focus on an example that is a free field response analysis uh, for a site that looks like uh, this free field that's uh, right here. And uh, we have a surface shear wave velocity of 200 meters per second and a Poisson ratio of 0.25 and a uh, row that is a uh, mass density of 2,000 kilograms per meter cubed. And I've provided, provided here the, all the input files for, for you to reproduce this uh, analysis case. Motions are generated with my ShakerMaker Python library. You can check the script that does uh, the generation of the motions. You, you can download it here. And, and if you don't want to run Shaker Maker, you can download the final data set called Santiago 1. This is part of my research, ongoing research. So these motions are targeted to be representatives of Santiago, or at least the site is. So the setup of the analysis is as follows. We have a site, where the place where we put the DRM box 10 kilometers away. And we have actually uh, at three kilometers depth, we have a dip slip fault that produces uh, some motions. And since we have a, some asymmetry about the y-axis, note that the shaker maker uh, coordinate system is uh, kind of reversed, so that z is down, so you have to exchange x and y axes. Anyway, the motions at the site occur only in the z direction, the vertical, and the east, that is uh, y direction. Now, uh, in importing this into open seas requires that we flip the coordinate system, so that's why we have we have to go up through all this. Uh, a fancy transformation and it's not just the rotation of the axis it's just it's also the scale because the scale is in kilometers for the for the for the regional motions to generate the data set and we have to transform that into meters anyway so uh, other conditions here is the um the frequency the corner frequency for the broom uh, point source and the cutoff frequency that we we're going to set up set up for the mesh that leads to a dx that is a discretization size one meter so the little notes here are all separated by one meter. And the box size here is 40 meters by 40 meters and by 15 meters in depth. Now the DRM, you need to set up an absorbent boundary layer that this goes a little bit further beyond that. I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but we have a Rayleigh damping of about 0.1% inside. So not, a, not much damping at all, absolute, almost no damping. And outside we have 20% uh, Rayleigh damping. And the reason for that is to absorb any unresolved frequencies that might result from the motion inside the domain. And finally, <clears throat> I provide the OpenSeas model. The OpenSeas model was pre prepared with SDQ. I'm gonna show you a little bit of that in, in a few seconds. But I prepared, if, in case you don't have uh, SDQ, you can download 
the tickle files, the open six TCL files for one partition, two partitions, four, eight, and 16 partitions if you want to run an open seas MP. And I really strongly suggest to do so. This is, these are large models and uh, they're meant to be run in, in a parallel setting. So you can download it for any amount of partitions you want. And if you look into the analysis steps dot tickle file inside, you'll find what the specific command I'm using here and the specific options for this. Now I'm going to go into STKO and show you a little bit uh, what the, the new plugin for the DRM analysis looks like. So we added, this is the model of the site, so you can look at the mesh, and this is what I was showing here <coughs> uh, previously. And then uh, we have we have a setup here so that the boundary conditions are, are such that uh, the outward normals, uh, the motion in the outward normal direction is impeded, but in the transverse direction is, is allowed. So the red faces here are in the X direction, uh, so the X direction motion is impeded by the Y and the Z, it is not. And same goes for the, the green is in the Y direction and the, the blue is in the Z direction. And that's all you need as far as uh, as, uh, as boundary conditions. Uh, we're using brick elements and we're gonna be using uh, elastic isotropic material properties. You can see the properties on the screen, but they're set up to be equivalent to the 200 meters per second shear wave velocity I told you about. So the main thing here is to, we're gonna turn on the mesh a little bit and I'm gonna show you a new plugin we developed with the good people at Asdea that uh, is useful for setting up the DRM analysis. So you'll see as the, pl as the plugin comes up, you have a place uh, to load the data set that you wanna work with. And then uh, as soon as you have that, the DRM box is gonna be get centered into the domain. So the center into the domain. Now, now this uh, data set H5 DRM is an HDF5 data set. So I can actually open it up uh, with uh, HDF view. Let's take a look at what's in here. In the DRM data, we have, uh, let's see, DRM data. Let's see if I can drop this down. Uh, for some, okay, there we go. So we have information about where the coordinates of the DRM points are. And these are in the, re the original coordinates uh, that used in Shaker Maker. So these are kilometers. And you can see they're offset by around 10. They're not centered in the origin. These are X, Y, and Z. And Z is positive downward, so we do need to move these around. <coughs> and also in here, you have uh, information about the acceleration and displacements at each of these points. But importantly, you have QA data, that's quality assurance data. So there's a, a point in here uh, that has a known response, and this is what I'm showing here. This response over here is the response at a point that is, uh, that is located at the surface, so at the, uh, at, at the center point over there. So, you know, once you run this analysis, you know, you have something to compare with to see if you set it up right. Now, uh, when you when you start using H5DRM, everything is in uh, in reference units. So if you set the original units are in kilometers, everything's going to get centered, but you're, you're going to have a really small box. It's going to be there. So that's why we need to amplify by a thousand meters per kilometer. Basically, that's that's that factor that's there. And uh, that. Once that's set up, oh, that, no, I said the distance tolerance, that's another thing. So the distance tolerance is uh, the tolerance with which the nodal matching. So what, what H5DRM does, it's gonna check for these points and they might not match. So if I just, if the mesh doesn't match perfectly with the, with the location of the points, like if I move this a little bit out of the way, you see the nodes don't perfectly match. So it's gonna let, look for the closest point in the mesh that matches within this tolerance. So if some points are not matching within this tolerance, the, the new load pattern is gonna complain, it's gonna give a warning, but it's not gonna stop, it's gonna keep going. Uh, you can you can use this tolerance to just fine tune what, what you wanna be the matching. If you set this to a large number, so let's say a thousand, what it's gonna do, it's gonna find the nearest one. So if the mesh, mesh matches perfectly, it's not gonna make any difference whether it's 1000 or is 10 to minus three, I don't know, within some tolerance. So if you want nearest neighbor matching, you set this to a large number, it's gonna find. If you want something more specific, more fine tuned, I suggest leaving that at you know, a fraction of uh, what the discretization size is. So if the discretization size in this case is one meter, I set it to 0.5 meters. And as you can see here, I already showed a little bit, but you can use this tool to move your DRM box a little bit around and uh, 
get it to be exactly where you want it. And you can have rotations too. So this local Y axis is what we actually use to get the box looking correct correctly. So if I set this to what the default is, so this is the default. What you're gonna see is that the box is actually upside down because the Shaker Maker's uh, original coordinate system is with Z downwards. So that's what uh, the original points look like. Uh, barring the, the coordinate scale transformation. So in order to get this right, I set the local x-axis to be to be pointing in the y direction and the local uh, y-axis to be pointing in the in the x direction and that flips the x, the, 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 the z-axis and everything lines up perfectly. So that's it as far as the using the plugin and this gives you a sense also of what that command line uh, looks like. So in the the command uh, for the tickle, the TCL command binding, you have H5DRM, you have a, a pattern tag, so this is an integer tag, every every pattern has to have that, a path to the data set you want to use, a factor, so you can scale the, the motions by any factor that you want, maybe you develop them, the, the data set originally comes in G's, so you can put 9.1 here, 9.81 here if you, you're working in the SI units, and then you can have a scale factor for the coordinates. Uh, so that'll be this uh, this coordinate scale factor that I was talking about here. If I set that to 500, it's going to just scale down the size of the box. We set it to 1,000 because it's converting kilometers to meters. And then you have a distance tolerance. That's that parameter I told you about that uh, controls the matching of the nodes. And then there's a flag that's not in the GUI. This is set to zero if you don't want to do coordinate transformations. If you do, you set it to one. And the way the transformation works, uh, you have uh, x, y uh, coordinates here. So these are going to be the, the first two columns of the transformation matrix, this transformation matrix here. And the final one is going to get computed with a, as a cross product of the previous two ones. And the vectors are also going to get normalized <coughs> by SDKO. But OpenSea's the, the load pattern doesn't do that. So you can actually control a little bit more with the, with the transformation matrix. As you can see here, the offset in the or the center of the DRM box is initially subtracted. Then you apply the transformation. Then you can move it, move the, the box around in the domain. So that's just to, to make the transformation a little, a little bit easier. And then yeah, that's the command. Those are all the parameters that are going in there. And if everything goes well, your analysis results are going to look something like this. I have them prepared here for you. Uh, that's your original site, and because the site is unperturbed so the site uh, that was used to generate the motions in shaker maker is exactly the same site uh, that i'm inputting as a fem model then the motions are going to match uh, pretty well and as I, I as i move the time slider around you're going to see the first arrivals and you can see the first arrival is actually moving the domain downward so let's go back to the motions we're expecting here the z motion is actually expected to be downward first and that's because we have a compressive p wave go, coming into the site as we as we move along but it's going downwards and to the east so downwards and in the plus x direction if we go back to sdko uh, this is uh, what we're seeing exactly so then as we move as we move further in the simulation the motion starts going around and this is what the the motion looks like this is a bit strange to, uh, to people that are starting out doing FEM or, or maybe ex even experienced people with FEM. But uh, the, um, I removed a little bit some of the, the half of the domain so we, we can look at the side. So this is typical of DRM analysis. You have a box that moves. It looks rigidly, but it's not rigid. Uh, there's wave passage effects. So those are notable if I, if I plot the x component just the x component and i turn off the the set scaling here so you can see in some some of the frames that for the x component you should see the wave passage effect there you go so it's it's not the same motion throughout the whole domain it's that there's actually differential motion as the wave passes through the domain and as we're going along here with the with the simulation so there's another case um yeah, so that's what DRM analysis looks like. And uh, let's set this back so that I'm seeing the complete magnitude. Yeah, that was, that was a nice one. Let's go back. 
ux yeah you can see that the motion here the x component of the motion here is larger than here so you're seeing a wave passage and i'm sure if i i press play on this we'll see a little bit of how that evolves yeah you can see the wave moving along or through the domain as we go so that's the rm analysis so that it allows you to to have complexity in your input motion not just having a bottom shaking kind of motion so it's a three-dimensional input system um yeah so with that uh, what else did i want to say uh, i wanted to go back into magnitude and uh setting here the the user-based limits so these are kind of small the displacements for for what it's worth okay so i think that pretty much uh, wraps uh, up this tutorial so i, I wanted to get this documentation known uh, i wanted it to be out there this uh, works in parallel of course i showed you uh, we did a partition analysis in OpenSea's mp so you can go ahead and run those analysis just like that and then um yeah, so I'd be happy to know what you guys think about this. If you, you plan on using it, if you need help, if there's anything else, uh, I can I can help you out uh, with setting up this. Uh, the Shaker Maker application is pretty straightforward to use if you want to generate your own motions. Now, you, if for for realistic cases, you you are going to need a cluster to run uh, those Shaker Maker simulations, and you're going to need a multi-core system to run uh, DRM type analysis, but it's much easier than it used to be uh, now. So like the, vid like the video, uh, subscribe, and just uh, let me know what your interests are and if I can help you out with your simulations. Goodbye. Okay,